I get lots of comments about how jealous you are at my awesome life. And yeah, from the outside, it seems like I have it all. I have a TV. I play Dungeons and Dragons. I have a compooper. I have a fridge full of root beer. I live in my mom's basement so I don't have to pay rent or buy food. Girls won't talk to me so I don't have to worry about them knocking down my door all day to get at me and interrupt my flow. And most importantly, I have a ton of handheld gaming devices that you don't. And while that might seem like it makes me better than you, that's not true. The reasons that I'm better than you have nothing to do with how many RG35XX pluses I have in my pockets right now. It's three, by the way. However, I just have all this crap because I'm, I'm tech dweeb. If I was a regular boring person like you, I wouldn't have this many retro handhelds or handheld gaming PCs or big beefy gaming PCs. I would have three devices. That's it. Not, not one, not 47, three. Which three would that be? Well, wouldn't you like to know? Yes, you would. <laughs> Hey there, TechDweeb here. How you doing? It, it, this is a concept that I've been noodling around in my brain and it's an important topic for people who do not have 47 different devices to game on. The idea is what combination of devices can give you a complete gaming experience so that you don't waste money buying things that do the same things as other things. I've narrowed this down to a combination of three devices. Not to say that you can't have more devices for variety or make do with less. But in my opinion, these three devices cover all the important bases and are really all that you need. Three device types that will give you access to the best games. All the best retro games or PC games or Android games or whatever you want to play. These three devices will have you covered. That's why I call it the TechDweeb Trifecta. Trifecta it mean, it means three, I think. Yeah, yeah, it does. So let's go over the categories one by one, learn about what makes each type of device important for the lifestyle of a gamer. And in each category, I'll give you some examples of devices that you can get. And I'll also give you my personal top pick for each category. And I'll have links to all these devices in the description below. And as a bonus, at the end of this video, I'll tell you the one device that I would pick if I could only have one device. The king of all devices that does everything. So without further dilly-dallying, as my mob would say, let's begin with our first category, which is the pocket-friendly device. This could also be considered a purse-friendly device for all you pocketless, purse-toting dweebs out there. Here's the thing. No matter which awesome, fun tech toys that you have at home, you will need to leave the house. Maybe you need to go to the driver's license store. Maybe you need to go to the bank so you can listen to the bank man explain for the 10th time that no, you can't have an infinite number of credit cards just because you want to build a credit card castle. Uh, maybe you need to go to your cousin's wedding and then you want to show off your burger time skills to impress your cousin's bridesmaids so that maybe one of them will dance with you when the, your favorite song comes on. Uh, probably not. Never mind. But even if you're not planning on leaving the house, having a pocket-friendly device just makes sense so you're not carrying a thing around all day. Also, an important category of games in your complete gaming life is retro games. And most retro games play great on any of the devices that will fit in your pocket. Lots of retro handhelds can fit into a pocket, but aren't going to be all that comfortable in there. A Retroid Pocket 4, for instance, technically can fit in your pocket, but it's not going to be comfortable if you carry it around often. So consider going with something small and sleek. I personally always have a retro handheld in my pocket. I wear cargo pants because I'm 40, so I have a nice cozy cargo pocket perfectly suited to have a retro handheld live in there. I can take something big like my RG353V. I can take something smaller like the RG35XX Plus or the Mew Mini Plus. Both are great, but the Mew Mini Plus is a bit more comfortable in the pocket. Those are probably my main suggestions for most people, especially the Mew Mini Plus. However, th those of you who have watched me for a while know what's coming. My personal number one pick for the pocket-friendly device is 
the original Miu Mini. I love this thing to bits. It literally lives in my pocket. Even if I'm just hanging around the house, I always have my Miu Mini with me. It's small without being tiny, a solid 9 out of 10 on the adorable scale. It runs Onion OS, which is an amazing operating system. Super quick to shut down and automatically save your game, and super quick to boot up and take you right back into your game. These things were hard to find for a while, but now they're available again. And you can go buy one right now if you want to. <laughs> the Miu Mini famine has ended. However, even though that's my personal pick, it's probably not what I'd recommend for most of you. L lots of people find the Miu Mini too small, so in that case, just go for the Miu Mini Plus. And you can even consider some of the bigger horizontal pocket-friendly devices like the Zazbizzle, also known as the RG35XXH, or even the RG405M if you want a bigger screen. As long as you can carry it around in your pocket comfortably, you'll have all your needs covered. I'm going to call this next category the couch device, but this could also be the bring with you to your friend's house device or the play with in bed device. This type of device probably won't be pocket friendly because you don't need to worry about carrying this around for hours in your pants or purse. This device is for gaming when you're sitting around, but you don't want to be tied to a single location. Something that will give you a really nice, comfortable game on a, a nice big screen, but is still portable enough that you can bring it places. This is the kind of device that maybe you want to think about alternate uses. For example, lots of devices have video out capabilities. Maybe you think about something with Bluetooth so you can attach Bluetooth controllers. Maybe you think about getting a device that can handle streaming so you can play not only retro games, but also stream PC or PlayStation or Xbox games. This type of device should serve many purposes, but one non-negotiable aspect is that it's comfortable to game on. One more thing to think about here is the operating system. Some devices that I consider very couch friendly can use Linux, but most of them are Android based, which is good because that means that not only can you play retro games, but you can also play Android games. And not only that, but Android gives you access to more emulation options. You can run standalone emulators for GameCube, PS2, 3DS, PSP, Nintendo Switch. That's optional stuff though. You don't need a device for the high-end stuff because we'll have a different device for that if needed. I think that the Retroid products are great couch devices. Either the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro or the RP4 Non-Pro or the RP2S if you're on a budget. And I think that a few of Amberlix devices are good choices. Maybe the RG505, which is my favorite PSP device, or the RG405V if you want a vertical format device that is also very comfortable. Couch devices are also great for streaming because on your couch at home, you usually have good internet or a local network, and then you can totally just stream your PC and console games. And this brings me to my personal top pick. I'm going with the Logitech G Cloud. This is a new one for me. I've only had it for a couple weeks, but I've been loving this device. It is hands down my most comfortable around the house device that I own. It has a huge, beautiful 7 inch 1080p screen, amazing controls, super comfortable form factor. I love the look of it. It runs all the higher end emulation that I want, and it has a 12 plus hour battery life. This thing lasts me days on a single charge. I have lots of other devices that are great, but none are nearly as perfect for around the house gaming as this thing. I love it. Check out my video link below if you want to know more about that. And now we need to get you covered in terms of modern gaming. You really, you need a device to play the latest modern games. Either all of the amazing indie games out there or AAA games. Now, I don't want to be a PC master race elitist, so I'll pay some lip service to consoles here. An Xbox or a PS5 or even a Switch are great choices for this. And I can totally understand the draw that consoles have. They are easier and there's something appealing about that. And also, usually, the hardware is cheaper. And hey, if, if it plays the games that you want to play, then you're set with a console. Go for that if that's your thing. However, in my mind, nothing beats PC gaming. For, for so many reasons, but you don't need to go nuts. It just depends on what you want to play. Even a low-end PC, like a low-end laptop or mini PC, can still be a gaming PC if you're sticking to older games and indie games. 
Not to mention that PCs can do high-end emulation. And of course, you can stream from your PC. You can stream your PC games or your emulators to your couch device. And like I showed in my G Cloud video, the experience that you'll get is more or less perfect. So your options here for your modern gaming device are vast and varied. One product that I show off quite often is mini PCs. You could grab something like this GMK Tech Nookbox K6. That's like a gaming mini PC and it can run high-end PC games like Baldur's Gate or whatever you're into. And it can do all the emulation stuff too. Or something like this GMK Tech Nookbox G3. It's like an N100 mini PC. But even this, it's really cheap and it'll play all those indies and even all those older games from the Xbox 360 era. Or you can get a proper gaming PC. You don't need to break the bank. I've made guides on how to build your own gaming PC on a budget, but if you're a true gamer, you'll probably want to get a decent gaming PC. Either build it yourself or get a pre-built. You can have your gaming PC set up on a desk or attach it to your TV to use as a PC gaming console. You can get a basic desktop gaming PC for like seven or 800 bucks, something with like an i5 and an RTX 3060 or something. That would be more than enough. You can use it to game on, edit videos, do graphic design or whatever. I'll try to find a few pre-built PCs that I that seem good to me and I'll link them below. But check out my guide series because I show you how to do it yourself. Pick the parts and build it, install everything. I'll link to those below as well. L lots of links down there, I guess. But whatever route that you take for your modern gaming device, as long as you can play at least all the great indie games that come out every day and hopefully the latest and greatest AAA games, then you'll be covered. And finally, like I said at the start, I'm going to give you my recommendation for the one size fits all device. If you're only going to get one device that will cover your needs, what will it be? Well, I, I think you guys knew that this was coming. If I'm picking one device to get, it's gonna be the Steam Deck. <laughs> I mean, come on, it's the one. This thing can do everything that you need. It's portable, so while it's not pocket friendly, you can bring it around easily enough. Get yourself a good case like this TomTok shell or bag to protect it. You can play it around your house, in the tub, in bed, or whatever you gotta do. You can dock it to your TV or a monitor to use it in like a console mode with an external controller. You can play all the older PC games on Steam. You can play the scads and scads of amazing indies. And you can play most of the modern AAA games that come out. And and you can emulate basically everything on here. It's not a gaming beast, but there is no one device that does more than the deck does. All in a neat, tidy little package, affordable, with all the conveniences of a console and the flexibility of a gaming PC all in one. And you can just use it to binge tech tweet videos, of course. Uh, that's actually the best use for any device, FYI. So that, that's it. That's my three categories of a device that cover all your needs. You don't need 47 devices like the tech weebs that you see on YouTube. You just need three. You need a pocket device, you need a couch device, and you need a modern gaming device. There are devices that blur the line and can fill the role of more than one of these categories. But in my opinion, there will always be compromises. If you want the perfect combo of devices, you need to have these three categories covered. Ideally with three different devices that do each of them perfectly. It's the TechTweeb trifecta. And that brings us to the end. I hope you found this helpful, enlightening, stimulating. If you like this video, then maybe check out this video where I show you my main handheld. And it's probably not the device you'd expect. There's a link on the screen now and down in the description below. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.